So let's look a little bit more in depth at sums of periodic signals. In the previous video, we actually worked through an example where we had two different signals that were periodic and we added them together and we ended up getting a signal that was periodic. And we kind of made a kind of hand wavy argument that as long as the individual signals have periods that has a ratio that's rational, then that will all work out. So let's work through in a little bit more detail exactly where that rational ratio argument comes from and kind of prove why that's the case. So let's look at the sum of periodic signals. So the first signal will be F1 of t, and it's gonna have a period t1. And then the other signal we'll deal with is F2 of t, which has some other period t2. And we are going to write out what that means. If F1 of t is periodic with period t1, this holds for all time. And if I can go forward one t1, I can go forward some integer multiple of t1s and also get back to where I started. Right, So whether I go forward T1 or 2T1 or 3T1, I always get back exactly where I start in the sequence. So this holds not only for all time, but also for all integers M. Similarly, what does it mean for F2 of T to be periodic with period T2? That's what it means. And then similarly, this is equal to N T of 2 shift in time, and this holds for all N. So this is what it means to be periodic with period T1, periodic with period T2. I'm now gonna create a new signal, F3 of t, that is the sum of F1 of t and F2 of t. And the question we're interested in is, is this a periodic signal? Is F3 of t periodic? So that's what we would need to figure out. Because F1 of t is periodic, we know that it's equal to this. And because F2 of t is periodic, it's equal to this. So we know that can happen. The real question though is, is F3 of t periodic. If it's going to be periodic, I need to find some number. We read this right here as there exists. So there exists some t3 such that when I shift t by t3, I end up back where I started. So I need F3 of t equal to F3 of t plus t3 for all time. So on the next page, let's evaluate this, which means replacing t with t3 up here and work through the math and see what constraint that puts on T1 and T2. And out pops this rational uh, fraction that we discussed last time. So this is what we have, this is definitely true. We just don't know if F3 of T is periodic or not. Let's go ahead and compute F3 of T plus T3 and figure out what T3 needs to be for this to be periodic. So I need to replace this t with t plus t3, and I need to replace this t with t plus t3. So I've gone ahead and done that. That equals, and here's the question. Does this equal where I started? Where did I start? I started at this expression. So if t3 is truly the, the period of f3, after shifting by t3, I should get back to where I started. That and that are exactly the same. And that's the question that we have to answer. Will this occur? Well, we can figure out if that will occur for the individual signals. That's definitely going to happen for F1 as long as T3 is some other multiple of T1, right? M is this general number. If T3 is, I don't know, 7T1, then I can lump the M and the 7 together and just have some shift of T1s. Same argument right here. If T3 is some multiple of T2, then I could group all those T2s, and clearly I could have it written in the form a number time T2. So in going from this line to this line, the observation is that I now need this to be a multiple of T1, so I'm gonna call it KT1. I need to find some other you know, integer K, and then I need this to be some multiple of T2, and I'll call it L of T2. So if I can find a K and an L, such that that's true, then T3 and T3 are the exact same thing, and I can set them equal to each other. So KT1 equals LT2. And then if I solve for the ratio T1 over T2, that says that the ratio T1 over T2 has to be an integer over an integer, which is the criteria we came up with last time. The ratio of periods is a rational fraction. So that's how you can always check, is this sum of periodic things periodic? 
as long as the ratio of periods is a rational fraction, you're good to go. And then that's where this least common multiple comes in. That's really kind of what we're doing up here, right? We're finding this multiple of t1, this multiple of t2, right? And once you know that the f3 of t is periodic, you can then actually go compute the period itself as the least common multiple. So I didn't go through this in as much detail, but I think that's a little bit easier to see. But deriving why this rational fraction is the criteria is kind of an important thing to understand. All right, so that wraps up our discussion on periodic and non-periodic signals. In the next video, we'll talk about simply defined and piecewise defined signals.